and uh, welcome to GTA Charts. And you see in front of you now the, the wizard, the GTA wizard. We're just going to go through a couple of hands I played uh, a few days ago that I marked, I starred them. Just, uh, I was unsure at the time whether I played them optimally. And um, I just want to go back over them and, and see what the, the wizard has to say about my play. Uh, fantastic tool, love it. And really great poker coach. So the way I'm using it at the moment is I'll play a session. And uh, any spots during the session that I'm a little unsure of what I should have done. I just um, mark them. You just do a star on GG Poker for instance. And um, then play them back later. Um, I was going to show you how that starred. But you pretty much all you do is... Um, Just look at your timeline on um, PokerCraft and um, you can filter on your starred hands and pretty much brings them all up. Um, I've chosen a couple already so um, I'll just move that aside for the moment. So one of them's a winning hand and the other one I think I lost so it's probably good to go through a winning one and a losing one and um, without further ado uh, let's go through the first hand so I am under the gun it seems I wake up with ace queen off we might speed this up a bit say two times and I get raised by the um, middle position and what do I do decide to four bet and then um, middle position flats. So let's have a look at that for a start. Um, whether four betting there with ace queen offsuit under the gun was uh, the correct play, how it stacks up. Um, you see in front of you now GTA Wizard, and um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a great tool for. Um, for a lot of things, um, GTO-wise, um, there's solutions, there's re which we're looking at now. There's also a practice mode, which I hope to go into in a later video, but, you know, it, there's a lot to it. So uh, I don't understand it all at the moment, but um, so hoping just to uh, get across to you what I understand. And um, every time I, I sort of um, get better at a particular part of GTO charts, I hope to bring out a video, sorry, GTO wizard. I'm going to bring out a video explaining it, but uh, let's just stick to solutions at the moment. Um, and I have chosen NL50 general. Um, there's also 2.5x general, but some of these, if you notice, they um, do not do all spots. They only do preflop. Or hang on a moment, this might have changed recently. Yeah, it looks like it's changed. That before was um, only a couple of these had um, all spots solved at 100 big blinds and L50. But now it seems like all four of them have um, all spots rather than just preflop. Um, so that leads me to think I should probably um, look at simple because of the fact that it is simple as in you only three bet or fold versus an open and there's no four bet all in and no limping uh, which is the strategy I um, used so let's go with that uh, and see what we come up with um, and it's five percent rake which again on GG seems about right four BB cap may not be quite exactly it might be I'm not sure I'm not going to say but I think this is going to be good enough. So let's start under the gun. And um, I woke up with Ace Queen off, which is pretty standard open, obviously. Um, and I need to explain too much there. Then I get, uh, sorry, so I raise, under the gun raises. Then hijack, I call that middle position. Um, then it goes fold. Everybody folds. Everybody folds. Button folds. Mobile line folds. B 
big blindfolds and it's back to me under the gun. Um, I have Ace Queen off, what should we do? So uh, you see here it seems like it's split about 50-50. Oops, sorry, I clicked on Ace Queen. Okay, so we go over here, have a look at uh, summary. Um, all Ace Queens off against a 3-bet seems to be split. Um, approximately 50-50 if you look at the hands. The individual hands don't matter at this stage because there's been no uh, flop as yet. So everything's, they're leaning, to, it's leaning towards raise a little bit more. Um, raise to 19, about 54% uh, of the time. Which is what I did. So let's go back to the hand. Um, um, and then the cutoff, sorry, the middle position calls, which is, um, so I, that's, sorry, raised to 19. So I did, I mean, that's probably not exactly what I raised to. Let's see what the hijack should do. Um, so we don't know what he has at this stage. He does, we do find out at the end. Um, but, if we just take his entire range into consideration, he should be um, calling 25% and folding about 50%. Um, his particular hand, I do know what it is, but uh, I won't divulge it quite at the moment. We'll just play it out as I played it out, not knowing what he had. Okay, so he called which seems pretty standard, depending on what hand he had. And then the flop. Let's have a look at the flop. Let's go back to here. Flop come five of clubs, eight of diamonds, king of hearts. Five of clubs, eight of diamonds, king of hearts. Okay, um, I'm going to just see what I did first. So that was the flop. And I decide to bet, looks like about third pot, and he snap calls. So, go back again. Um, with Ace Queen off, click on there. You can either look at it here or, or over here. Um, but over here is, on the left is probably adequate at the moment. So, I should bet. According to the Solba, 75% um, of the pot, about 8% of the time, 50% of the pot, 36 and 25%, uh, 50%, which is what I did. I probably usually bet about a third of the pot. Uh, that's close enough to 25%. Um, so let's go with bet 25%. And then it was snap called by the hijack, uh, which seems reasonable, depending on what he's holding. He's still folding 50%, calling 36%. Again, seems reasonable. Um, then comes the three of diamonds on the turn. And I, this is where I was like, not too excited with my hand so I checked and then he checked and then um, came a king of diamonds river but let's just have a look sorry at that uh, turn first uh, three diamonds turn I bet he called three diamonds turn And Ace Queen should check 67% of the time, which is what I did. Seems like I have sort of got this right ish up to this point. And then um, it was checked back with his range, should be done 50% of the time. And um, 
and checks it. Then the river, let's have a look, King of Diamonds uh, came and I was in quite the spot. Um, so I thought, you know, I, I'm pretty certain if he had Ace King that, or King Queen, that he would, um, when I checked to him on the turn, that he would bet that. Um, when the King came in the river, I was quietly confident he didn't have a King. Uh, and then the fact that flush draw completed, and I had the Ace of Diamonds. Blocker to the nut flush draw. Um, yeah, I closed my eyes. <laughs> and I shoved. And that's where I was like, hmm. Not sure was that the right thing to do. I did. Um, let's see what happens. He thought about it. Then he folded and showed me the queens. Um, so let's have a look at that. I won the hand. Not sure whether I was uh, entitled to do that. What are we looking for here? The um, sorry, yeah, the King of Diamonds um, River. Okay, King of Diamonds River. It's on me, and I should all in never. Bet 61%, um, bet 35%, 10% of the time, and check 90% of the time. So it looks like that my play um, was not GTO, um, so I did not play the hand as I should have. It's something to keep in mind, very hard to not think, well, I won, therefore I played the hand correctly. Uh, it's probably the wrong way to look at it. So I should be not that pleased with the way I play this hand. But again, I did scoop the pot. So, but um, yeah, we will um, we'll take that on board for next time. But um, let's move on to another hand and um, see what we can work out from that. Okay, so here we are, and GG Poker again. Not sure what hand this even is, but let's just uh, go for it. Ace King offsuit in the small blind. Okay, one would imagine I three bet. So button raises to two and a half. I raise it to about 10.5, big blinds. And then he calls. Okay, let's have a look at the pre-flop action. Move that out of the way. And reset this. So some of this um, I probably need to explain. Once you've gone through a hand and finished, um, you click on this little cross here to reset the history and start all over again. Okay, so this time, um, under the gun folds. Hijack folds. Um, cut off folds. Button raises. And we probably should have raised a bit more according to this. I already raised that with Ace King. Sorry, I should have looked there, but yeah, that was obviously pretty standard. Uh, big blind folds. And the button calls. Now the button should call 12% his range and fold 72%. But he calls, so let's assume he has, if he's playing GTO, um, one of these premium hands here and not going to have any of this uh, junky stuff here no, this 8-6 suited that he should have opened on the button king 3 suited king 2 suited but I uh, wouldn't discount anything so he calls that's all pretty standard up to this point um, and then the flop comes 3 of clubs jack of spades, queen of diamonds 3 of clubs Jack of spades, queen of 
Diamonds. I think I got that right. Yes, I did. Um, it's on me in the small blind. So I picked up I have a gut shot and I have Ace King off. And this way I have to take into consideration um, what your suits are. Um, flops come and go over here and break it down into the, to the exact hand. And we look at Ace of Spades, King of Clubs. Ace of Spades, you know, clubs up here, we should bet 33%, about 48%, about half the time, and bet larger, uh, about 35% of the time, and check 15%. So I, sure, I'm sure I bet, usually third of pot, um, cut shot, and it is a three bet pot. So I bet about third, I think. Oh, that looks. Oh, maybe it was caught more close to quarter. Okay. Now the king of diamonds comes. Um, this is where I was a little confused. It's nice. I've hit the king, but the board now comes a little scary. Um, finish off this small blind. Um. Sorry, I bet 33% of the pot. And the button called. And we hit the king of diamonds. What to do, what to do. Um, I guess we'll see what I did first. Thought about it for a while. And bet mm, three quarters ish. And looks like he thought about it and then he called. Okay, King of Diamonds. Um, that's uh, bet 66%. Oh, what should I have done? Hold on a moment. So, Ace. Spades, King of Clubs. Oh. Another tip is to, to see your hands over here, you need to actually click on it here and open that up. Then you can come over here and look at um, either the summary. Um, notice here also there's blockers, but that's um, this come in recently. It's part of the premium offering, which I don't have at the moment. Hope to get that soon. Um, hands... Ace of Spades, King of Clubs, that's what we had, wasn't it? Yep. Um, we should check 64% of the time and bet a third of pot, about 35%. And I bet 66% of the pot or thereabouts, which you should never do ever. Going to GTO, so that's a big mistake from me. Um, and he called so let's so we bet 66% which is completely bad that's a big mistake um, so let's go back for a sec and see what okay, if you look at ace king he's betting more than our ace king so um, if you notice, say, Ace of Diamonds and King of Clubs, or Ace of Diamonds, King of Hearts, seem to be betting more, 43%, uh, 46%, as opposed to 35%. I assume that that is because um, of the Ace of Diamonds um, as a blocker to the nut flush, and I don't take my word on that 100%. Um, I think that's probably why. But um, we don't have that hand. Spades, Ace of Spades, King of Clubs, and let's stick with that. So, um, we 
yep, so we did that. We bet 66%, button calls, and then our river is the six of diamonds. Now I'm supremely and utterly confused because um, for a few reasons. One, I just butchered the uh, turn. So I'm in a spot that I shouldn't be in if I played GTO optimally, which I never profess to do, um, especially post-flop. A six of diamond comes on me and I assume I chicken out. Well, I've got a, you know, I've got a king, you know, king high with a good kicker, so I check, hoping for him to check back. He bets, and let's pause it there. Um, he's all in, and puts me in a sticky, sticky spot. Ah, uh, let's have a look. Oh, sorry, wrong hand, wrong way. Um, six of diamonds. I checked. Uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, six of diamonds and ace king off. Yeah, I think the wizard's a little confused because of my bad decision on the turn. Um, not sure of that. So I bet 66%, something I should never have done. So when I look at ace-king off here on the river now, um, my ace of spades, king of clubs is not even there. Um, other ace-king offs, it's saying check 100% uh, of the time or Bet 10%, 100% of the time. So, how about we go back and to the small blind and make the decision I should have made, which was bet 33%. Then uh, button called. And we had the six of diamonds river. And then it comes to us, and then it seems like it's uh, not so confused. That with our Ace of Spades, King of Clubs, uh, we should check 42% um, of the time, which is what I did, and we should have, we can bet 10%, 57% of the time. Um, I checked, he shoved, that's right. So I check. He goes all in, which he Okay, he goes all in. Uh, what should I do? Um, with Ace King off, call 65% of the time. And my particular holding, spades, clubs, uh, call 60% of the time. So, which I did, I think I called. Um, After I'm thinking, thinking, here it comes. Should speed that up, but it's a bit late. Okay, you can do it. Oh, I folded. Okay. Interesting. I thought I called. Um. Okay. What should I have done? Um. Yeah, I should have folded 66. No, nope, not looking at that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I should have called 60% of the time, folded 40%. So that's not horrific. Um, but keep in mind, I just made a bad decision on the turn. Um, probably not horrific. It was bet sizing rather than anything else. Um, but yeah, it's uh, interesting to know what he had. Um, on that hand, we will never know. Um, but uh, yeah, look, this is. I'm just trying to show you here that how awesome this program is to, to, to go back and check your hands and see how you played it. 
Um, I know I've never been one for coaches, um, probably to my detriment. I've just always tried to work this stuff out on my own, but now I have the wizard at my side. It's so simple um, to go back and, you know, just go over your hands and, and see how you played them. Um, just just take a note of the ones that you thought you didn't, you, that you played badly or you weren't sure whether you made the right decision. And um, I can guarantee this, uh, the wizard's going to really sharpen up your game. Okay, I'm just going to quickly show you one more thing. Another um, great tool is um, you can actually like practice, it's practice mode. So in this instance, uh, if I decided that, you know, I thought I sucked at um, playing, let's go back to this hand. Um, so under the gun versus um, cut off, so middle position, and I'm out of position. I decide, well, I suck at this position this particular spot in a four bit pot, um, then you can go and practice that spot. So let's go and hit practice full hand. And we pick under the gun, hijack, and it's four bit and we are out of position. And uh, the board's anything, we just keep it 50 and L simple. And away you go. And so, same spot we're in before, but this time we have ace, jack of diamonds, or under the gun. Uh, I've um, four bet and the hijack's flattered. Um, and the board is queen of spades, eight of hearts, five of diamonds. So what do we do? So there's a couple of things you can do. You can actually, um, have this on or off and show the results after each action. So if, if I pick something here like bet 10%, it'll show me whether that's right or wrong. Or you can um, click there and show the results. That'll show it at, at the end. Once you've played the hand, it'll show you um, whether you've played it optimally or not. So I'm going to go for this after each action because um, I think it's probably more in it's probably the best way to, to do when you first start off. Um, so on this board, if I, I think, um, I think I'm going to bet because um, with, although I've missed, I do have a backdoor diamond draw, so about 25%. And lo and behold, um, you get all this pop up. It's saying that that's reasonably okay. It's giving me a tick. So betting 32% is okay. Um, but what would have been a better action according to this, uh, the wizard is betting 50%, um, would have been a better action. Let's suggest that. And then checking is also a reasonable strategy. Betting 10%, betting 75% or shoving all in, um, is not recommended at all, which shoving all in would be ridiculous. Um. So let's continue and see what he does. He calls and we get the king of clubs. And yeah, uh, find ourselves in another sticky spot. Uh, gut shot. You know, king's got to be in his range big time. So I think I'm going to check. And uh, began. That is not the right move. Um, I should have bet 25%. So let's change the move. You can change it then and go, okay, let's bet 25%. And we continue. Um, he calls. And the river's a seven of clubs. Eh. Well, I would, I think, check this back. Um, yeah, 64%. So I did that correctly. Um, it seems as though everything is 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 gets a tick, but uh, the optimal action is to check it back. Um, it's possible. I don't see how. I don't see what what he'd have that would be worse. Um, you know, ace king, ace queen, king queen beats me. Any pocket pair. Um, 
but uh, let's see. He shoves all in. Um, I'm definitely going to fold. And hopefully that is a 100% EV um, decision, which is good to know. Showdown. Okay. Uh, he had coins. But uh, yeah, hope uh, you enjoyed that. I mean, that's very cool. This is really great. And then you can go back and um, at least saw your hands here that you played. Um, and you can go back and I got a tick for that. It wasn't any super bad decision. Oh, actually, we did change one, didn't we? So um, probably would not have got a tick for that. Um, yep, and then, you know, great way to practice is just go through like about 10 hands. Um, maybe turn that off and then see what you do at the end. So this time, let's just go through this and we will, um, yeah, about 25%. This looks this looks much better. 50%. He calls and yeah, well, we don't have much left. Let's shove it and he calls and we own him. However, as you can see, um, we get a little begant sign here, meaning um, it didn't like how we played it. We made a mistake somewhere. Um, on the turn, it's saying that we should have shoved all in, which seems reasonable because I wasn't really paying attention to the uh, stack depths, which I should have. They were pretty, um, I didn't have that much left there. So shoving on the turn um, is uh, the optimal play. And then checking on the river after I bet 50% is um, optimal. Okay, I have much to learn, as I'm sure you do, but this is a great way to do it. And um, yeah, lots more to this analyzing hands. You can upload hands from um, uh, poker sites, a um, whole bunch to it. I hope to bring you some more, more stuff. These I've actually uploaded from GG, cut, paste, upload the hand. Tells you all about it, how you played them, um, looks like. I got myself into some non-existing GTO spots. Doesn't surprise me. A couple of hands supposedly played okay. But um, very cool. Okay, um, yeah, that's it for me. Hope to uh, talk to you soon.